What are you going to do to challenge yourself for Winter Fill Day? Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. All right, so I think this is the third take on this video, so hopefully I can get it right this time. And I want to talk to you guys today about Winterfield Day, what I'm planning to do, and how it's going to be different. I don't really plan on focusing on uh, traditional type contacts. Now, that's not to say I'm not going to be on the air and I'm not going to be making contacts. I certainly will. That's just not going to be my primary focus this year. Uh, so my primary operating station is going to be the ICOM 705. I'll be utilizing the Evolve laptop uh, running Linux Mint 21. And the primary mode that I would be working uh, will be JS8 Call. I absolutely love to work JS8 Call. And it's always more fun on winter fill day, uh, where summer fill day I tend to work FT8 because that's where the majority of the traffic is for summer fill day. But during winter fill day, FT8 is not allowed. So that's where I like to jump over and work JS8 Call. Now, in addition to the primary station, I will also be running an APRS DigiPeter uh, in pretty much the same configuration that I did during summer fill day. So I'll be utilizing an HT uh, that's connected to an antenna up about uh, probably 30-ish feet or so. Uh, the HT will have the MobiLink TNC3 connected to it, and that uh, system will be connected back to a Raspberry Pi uh, that will be driving the APRS DigiPeter. Now, it won't be an iGate, but it will be a DigiPeter. We've got a very nice uh, wide area uh, DigiPeter in the area that's also an iGate. So uh, if I can get that antenna up to 25 or 30 feet, I know from previous experience that it will get into the wide area Digi without any trouble whatsoever. So having that uh, APRS Digi will allow me to participate in the APRS message challenge. So I definitely want to do that as well. Now, if you guys don't know about the APRS message challenge, I just put out a video uh, last week on that. Go back and check that out. There's also the WinLink position report challenge. So two different challenges for winter fill day. Uh, and again, I'll be participating in both of those. But my primary goal for this year is to gather as much information over RF and disseminate that information locally to uh, our, our local field day site. Uh, so I do want to gather all that I can over RF. Now, I'm not going to use any internet uh, whatsoever during winter field day, so all of this has to be done over RF. But I want to gather things like weather reports, uh, solar reports for solar weather, uh, propagation reports, any data that I can gather over RF, I want to gather that and put it on the Pi display. I did a video uh, probably about a month ago on the Pi display. If you missed that, you can go back and check that out. I'm really excited about that tool. I don't expect it to really get a lot of use as far as visitors coming up and seeing that during winter field day. We just don't have the traffic that we would have during summer field day. But I am excited about that Pi display. I think that is a really neat tool that could be used in a lot of different applications. Uh, let's take Parks on the Air, for instance. If you were out at a park and you just put this Pi display on the corner of the table, if someone happened by your station while you're in the middle of a pileup, they could at least have some information presented to them until you caught a lull in that pileup and could take a break and talk to them more about what you're out at the park doing. So that's just one use case for the Pi display. I'm sure there are many, many others. Uh, primarily, I want to be uh, using it during winter, or I'm sorry, during summer fill day. So I want to use winter fill day to kind of iron out any of the bugs that I find in that system and have it ready to go when summer fill day rolls around. There's a lot of information that I do plan to pack into that uh, and have that on display right outside the RV uh, during winter field day and then again during summer field day. So I'm super excited about that and I always like to have a challenge for myself 
when it comes to fill day, that's one of the uh, one of the ways that I've managed to learn what I've learned over the years is trying different things for fill day. And I think everyone should take the time and run at least a small experiment during fill day uh, because you're definitely going to learn something. I've had a lot of successes over the years. I've had several failures over the years. So I've learned uh, a bit about what does work and what doesn't work. Um, so challenge yourself to do something new, experiment a little bit this winter fill day and hopefully you will learn something as well. All those experiments that I've run in the past, whether it's been uh, with batteries or with solar or something else with the Raspberry Pi, uh, those, those have all brought me forward in the hobby and, and I love to continue to learn. So I'm always using Field Day as an experiment. Uh, I definitely want to make some contact, so I hope that I can work you guys on the air. Uh, definitely send me a WinLink message during Winter Fill Day uh, or send me an APRS message. You'll have to go back and watch the video to figure out how to do that uh, and to know what SSID I'll be using during Winter Fill Day. Uh, we can't schedule that stuff beforehand or uh, technically it, it violates the rules of Winter Fill Day. So you have to uh, gather that data during the Winter Fill Day hours. So that's my plan for Winter Fill Day. Uh, the two stations that I'll be running plus the Pi Display, I'm curious as to what you guys are going to be doing. Are you going to be working Winter Fill Day from home or will you be getting out into the field? Winter Fill Day is always uh, uniquely challenging due to the weather. And I know uh, more so if you're located in Minnesota or Connecticut, you've got to deal with probably much colder weather than what we do here in Tennessee. But last year was pretty pretty chilly in the morning. I, if I remember right, it was 15 degrees uh, last year at the beginning of winter field day. So uh, it, you never know what to expect here with weather. It could be 15 degrees, it could be 60 degrees that morning. So we kind of have to prepare for both sides of it. But I am interested in what you guys are going to be doing, operating from home, operating in the field, what uh, modes do you like to work? Uh, I, I love digital and that's where I'll be spending my time during winter field day. Uh, but we'll have several guys that are operating voice as well. So what do you prefer and what challenges will you be taking on this winter field day? Leave it down in the comments below and we will see you guys on the next video. Until then, 7-3.